Welcome to my build of a, a 60 inch wingspan Das Ugly Stick. Um, I've completed the wings now and uh, the next step for me is to start looking at putting in the aileron hinges and um, the servos to control the ailerons. On the original plans by Phil Craft um, it shows just a single servo uh, mounted on the underside centrally and it operates um, the um, ailerons via bell cranks. Um, I'm not a, a great fan of that idea uh, and I would rather have independent servos. Um, I think it gives better control um, and it's just more direct and it's just something I prefer personally. I mean the bell cranks I'm sure is, is a, a really good way of doing it. Uh, it's just not something that, that I particularly want to do. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to mount the servo um, on a plate, thus, and um, I'm going to screw that up on the underside of the wing with just the control arm uh, sticking out there and a, a connecting rod going to the, um, to the control horn. So, as I say, that will just screw up onto the underside um, and be held in place flush, completely flush with the bottom of the wings. The first thing was to decide where to put the, um, the, the servo and the plate. Um, originally I looked at putting it here right down by the root because I was thinking of a short travel distance for the, um, uh, for the linkage, so just a very short control rod. Um, but there's a couple of problems with that. I mean there's, uh, there's the issue of height of the servo. Um, the servos are too big for that. But probably the most important point is the centre of gravity. Um, the centre of gravity is just at the rear of this spar or, or thereabouts so I think the nearer this can be to the centre of gravity the better hence pushing it right up against uh, that spar is, is a better option and I think the nearer you are to that spar the, the stronger the ribs are um, I can also put a, um, a piece of wood on here and just screw into that which will be a good, a good fixing um, just uh, just just where the, the, the spar is. So having chose the location I need to um, determine the best way to to hold that on there. Um, originally I'd made up some um, some balsa mounts with a bit of plywood on. Um, I was thinking these are nice and light I can epoxy them on um, but I've, I've kind of had concerns about these as to um, whether they were really strong enough using balsa um, on the ailerons like that. I, to be honest, I suspect they are, um, but I, I do like a little bit of overkill occasionally. Um, the weight of these is, is two grams each, so there's nothing to them. Um, but I thought, well, I'll make some hardwood ones, like I've done here, um, and these were three grams. So there's, there's nothing in it. Um, so I'm using these, these hardwood ones. Um, they'll be stronger, um, they're very slightly heavier but it, it makes it slightly heavier to the point that it's that I, I think it's insignificant. So I'm going to epoxy those onto there like that um, and as I said that will fit up from the underside and I've got some 8mm balsa here um, and I've put on some 3mm um, plywood on the top of this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these to the sides of the ribs, one either side, let's just remove the servo, uh, one either side like this, um, and then the, the plate, when I'm fixing it in, it can screw up and into these, uh, this um, uh, 3mm plywood here to get a bit of strength. What I will probably do as well is put, so I'll probably put one, two, three, four screws and maybe one here um, into the into uh, adjacent to the spar, a bit of wood stuck onto the spar, and maybe another one on the back here. So there'll probably be six screws, just to make sure it's held nice and solid. Um, I've also got to think about how I'm finishing off the um, uh, the, the film covering here uh, on the underside. It can come in and just lap onto. Uh, the underside of here, no problem. Um, 
On this bottom edge, I will probably put in um, some balsa for it to attach onto and maybe a piece on the inside, I need to cut this to size, but another a piece on the inside like that for it to lap under. So it's, it's held, it'll be held secure by this plate. So what I'm going to do now is um, get on and start to attach these fixings um, and, uh, and, and get that glued into place and see how that, uh, how that works. Right, well I've now done the um, servo mounting on the right hand side of the wing uh, just fairly roughly at the moment, it still needs sanding up and finishing but as I, I we talked about earlier um, I've mounted it on a, a piece of 3 mil ply with these hardwood um, blocks here and I've done recessed um, pieces of balsa and ply again I, I, I went through that earlier and this just now uh, will screw into place thus and I've got these um, servo screws, I don't know whether the camera can pick those up uh, just with a, a, an integral washer um, to hold those in. At the moment um, I'm just holding them in with a, a couple of screws but there will be at least four, um, possibly even um, possibly even six um, just to uh, just to hold it nice and tight. Um, so I won't put this all the way in. Oh, maybe I will. There we go. No, I won't put it all the way in. And if I turn this over, just move my weight, supporting it. Um, you can see how it looks from the inside there. So there's just this balsa wood frame that it it, it slips into, and I've cut cut a couple of slots uh, into the wing ribs. Uh, for the, the, the cable to pass through and the cable will then hang down into the fuselage. What I will actually do to finish that off um, I will put a piece of balsa uh, oops, across there like that and I'll bring my film and finish my film here so there's a gap there, probably a little bit bigger, maybe like that kind of size finish it there and then I could, got easy access if I need to re-thread the lead in the future uh, to put a, a replacement servo in. Now the next job uh, is to um, connect the, uh, the ailerons up and check I've got the, um, enough throw here. This, this um, arm doesn't stick down very far um, here um, below the wing but I think it will give me enough throw. I have measured it, I have checked and I think it will be fine, but I need to set that up now. So the next job is to put in the aileron hinges. Um, I've marked on this trailing edge where the ailerons are going. I'm going to mark that on the uh, aileron itself, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I cut my slots. Right, well I've now got the uh, aileron uh, fitted with the control linkages and the servo in the bay on the right hand side of the wing and um, I can test that just with this uh, servo tester and I get quite a lot of movement on that let's just readjust this a little bit uh, get quite a lot of movement on that so the control throws that they say on the plan are, are actually quite small um, they're talking of up by 516 and down by a quarter uh, which seems, seems quite small to me at the moment I'm getting um, about three quarters of an inch down and about a half inch up before it starts to get a little bit compromised here. Um, so that will be plenty I'm sure. Um, I might even adjust the control on here um, so that it's, it's actually less movement on the aileron. Um, but if need be I can move it down and get more. So I'm quite, I, I'm quite pleased that the way that's worked out. Um, on the actual aileron itself um, I'll just move this slightly close to the camera. Um, you can see I put in a piece of, cut out the balsa and put in a piece of 6mm plywood there, epoxied that in, sanded it lovely and smooth, and it just gives a better purchase for these screws. Quite often I, I'll bolt all the way through, um, but on this, um, just turn this over, I thought it'd be quite nice if 
if it didn't, oh, let me just unplug the servo, there we go. Um, I thought it'd be quite nice on this if it didn't have bolts on the top and it just looked a little bit sleeker. Um, we can see here with the servo, um, that's mounted quite nicely in there. It's all really solid, um, got the pieces of balsa glued in now. This is mostly, mostly epoxied in, the same as this piece of plywood here, just to give it that little bit of extra strength. But that seems really solid, there's no movement on that at all. So um, what I need to do now is, is get on and, and do the left hand side of the wing and then we'll almost be finished on this. Um, the, the, the control services, um, uh, whether that's the ailerons or the, um, the trailing edge here or the, the wing tips, they all need profiling, they're all still square at the moment. Um, so there's still quite a, a lot of work just, just finishing off. And also the aileron here is just slightly oversized. Um, that just needs trimming down a little bit, um, which is a result of, of me altering the ends here. Um, what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you how I did the, um, the aileron hinges. At the moment, these are just a, a push fit. They'll just uh, pull out. And so uh, they won't actually be glued into place until um, I've actually done the covering because if I put them in now, um, if, I, if I put the hinges in now, it will cause a problem um, or make it harder to put the covering on. Um, the hinges, um, I think, I, I'm not sure whether I've discussed this earlier, they're um, uh, mylar plastic. And, um, but I'll show you those and, um, and I'll show you how I do the, um, uh, the slots for them. I've now got the hinge locations marked on the aileron. Uh, there's four of them. Um, and they're just very slightly wider than the mylar hinges that I'm using. Uh, mylar hinges, um, they're just uh, very tough plastic. These ones, um, which I got from the World Models, have got a very um, textured finish to them, so I think they'll grip the CA uh, really quite nicely when, it, uh, when it's put on. And it's also got this slot in it. Um, it's, uh, I don't know whether you can see that. Oops, dropped it. Uh, don't know whether that will, is focusing on that. It's got a slot in it anyway that allows the, um, the CA to wick down into the uh, in, in, into the cut. So I've got the locations marked on the um, on the aileron. The next thing I'm going to do is now this is six mil um, balsa wood. Uh, so that is what, five nine six yeah six mil. Um, so and here I have uh, three mil. Um, plywood, thin strip, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on the edge of my uh, table and I'm then going to get my large scalpel which is a number 4 handle and it's a number 26 blade. I have done this with smaller scalpels but I find this quite nice um, and I'm just going to push that in and take it along and cut the, the slot. This will keep it central because it's 3mm and this is 6mm. If I keep the blade flat and also what I find quite nice is that the, the, the way the handle is made on this scalpel there's this um, uh, bit sticking out here and that just gives me a, a depth. So, do the first one just in nice and, nice and flat and then just work it along again, keeping the blade nice and flat on the balsa. Now I find making sure that edge is square and then coming back and we can do the same this way. Obviously you have to be careful of your fingers. So, and that now should just push in nice and tight. So there we have our, our hinge, really simple. I'll just do one of those close up now. Okay, so on the edge of the table we've got our 3mm and just get the scalpel and 
take that in nice and flat, slide it along, keeping it flat, and then just do it that way as well, being careful of your fingers. And the mylar hinge should just slip in. There we go. And as you can see, that's lovely and central. And the same with that one there. Right, well now I'm going to put the hinges or the slots in the trailing edge. Um, I've got the locations marked out um, to match up with the aileron, giving the appropriate gap at the end here. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way, except this trailing edge here is very slightly thicker um, than the aileron. So I've got a different piece of wood which is, equates to 50% of, um, of this trailing edge. So I know I'm in the middle. And if you remember, or you saw from, from a previous video, hopefully you saw, you'll see that I put wedge shaped blocks uh, here that I'm going to cut into. Um, because the, these trailing, this trailing edge sheeting was just coming down to a, a point here and there was nothing in there for the hinges to grip onto so I put, specifically put in those blocks in the right location. And just the same as with the, um, the ailerons, um, just put in the scalpel and then just slide it along nice and steady. Um, I mean I, I like using a scalpel to do this job, I know you can buy tools specifically for finding the center of your piece of balsa and, and specifically for cutting hinges but to be honest you can get tools for everything and I just think it's quite nice to use what you've got I use scalpels all the time um, for, for cutting my balsa and, and, and building and uh, they do a perfectly adequate job I can't believe you get a tool that would do it any better to be honest um, but that's, that's just my opinion um, you know these seem to work very well for me. So now we've got these done. Uh, the next job is to um, get on and uh, uh, do all the finishing on the wing with the profiling, trailing edges, uh, the wing tips, um, and then it will be ready for covering. So I'm going to call this uh, video to a, a halt now, as I've probably gone on uh, long enough and um, we can move on to the next stage of the build and I hope you'll join me. There we go. 